Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for making the time today to join this industry briefing um, webinar for road signs and lighting, grades, covers, and associated traffic products. My name is Dennis Tran, Procurement Specialist at Procurement Australia. I'm also joined today by my colleagues in the contracts, marketing, and sales team. We are here today to go over the proposed contract and the tender in which we are commencing and most importantly, to obtain any feedback you might have on the process, given that you are the industry experts. On the screen here, we've got the agenda items, which I'll be going over today. At the end of the session, there will be an opportunity for Q&A. So please, if you could hold your questions until that time, that would be much appreciated or type it into the chat function and we'll respond at the end of the session. So Procurement Australasia encompasses three different brands, as you can see. The first one being Procurement Australia, who is a procurement organization that fundamentally facilitates standing off of contracts by use uh, by our membership organizations through an aggregation model. Church Resources, who is a specialist aggregator for the not-for-profit sector. And lastly, and most recently, Space Station, which was established to offer organizations a co-working opportunity through a flexible office um, space model. Here we've got a timeline showing the history of our brand since 1985. Today, we've grown to an organization that allows suppliers such as yourselves to have access to a member base of over 24,000 entities across Australia and throughout industries such as the private, public, not-for-profit, education, aged care, health and church religious institutions. In addition to publicly um, tendered standing offer contracts, Procurement Australasia also offers services such as display contracts, advisory consulting, benchmarking and spend analysis, clustering and collaboration events, technical category expertise, as well as online training facilities through our YSB and B2B online jobs. As a procurement organization, accreditations are essential in aligning um, our service delivery to best practice standards. We are audited by the Victorian Auditor General's Office we also have a quality management system that meets ISO 9001 standards, as well as SIPS Procurement Excellence Standard. This slide shows some of the benefits that we provide to our members. This includes time and resource savings as they don't have to conduct tenders repetitively. In addition to this contract, we've got a broad product offering with a portfolio of over 30 standing offer contracts. Our contract arrange arrangements are flexible, meaning members can opt in and use it, use it at any time throughout, um, throughout the contract term. Also, members can rest assured that our processes are compliant and meets the tenant requirements of the public sector. Benefits to you guys, our suppliers, include a reduced number of tenders that you need to respond to, as we do that all on behalf of our members. By becoming a supplier, you get access to a membership base, which our sales team is constantly growing and promoting contracts such as this one. Okay, so to provide an overview of the contracts, the name is Road Signs and Lighting, Grades, Covers and Associated Traffic Products. The contract number is 2409-0334. The contract term shall be three years, starting on the 1st of October 2021 and expiring on 30th of November 2024, with two times 12-month um, options to extend the contract until potentially 30th of November 2026. Today, we have um, 10 members who have already provided a pre-commitment to this contract. Um, this number is expected to grow before the tender is released. So these are the objectives of this tender. It is first of all to deliver a compliant tender under the Local Government Acts, um, obtain an outcome that offers PA members a panel of experienced um, contractors, 
and lastly, provide a centrally managed standing of a contract for RFQ activity. This is an opportunity for suppliers such as yourselves um, to tailor responses and pricing specific to individual member requirements. So here we have the categories which um, we are proposing for this contract. We've got category one, road and traffic science and accessories. Category two, grades, access covers and associated products. Category three, traffic calming devices. Category four, work zone and associated products. Category five, road and pedestrian lighting and associated products. I'll talk through these categories in a little more detail um, in the next few slides. <clears throat> so in relation to category one, road and traffic signs and accessories, these are the instruments located above and aside roadways, which um, provides information or give instructions to the users of the road. Some examples of the deliverables we are requesting as part of this contract um, includes these dot points here. Um, this category will also include installation, maintenance and repairs. For category two, um, great access covers and associated products, um, which is essentially um, safe access and movement of vehicles and pedestrians across spaces reserved for the passage of sewage or stormwater. We are seeking suppliers that can provide the following as listed. Um, this category again will include installation, maintenance and repairs. Traffic calming devices. These are devices which are used to manipulate the behavior of road users and how they maneuver a particular space. Examples include speed um, bumps, humps, cushions, tables, rumble strips, um, etc. This category will also be requesting installation, maintenance and repairs. So category four is the provision of work zone and associated products. A work zone is an area where construction or maintenance work is carried out, uh, which is particularly along a stretch of road. Some examples of these products are listed here. Uh, this category does not require any installation, maintenance or repairs. Category 5 is road and pedestrian lighting and associated products. We are referring to the system of instruments which illuminates a particular road or pathway. Uh, we are requesting some products within the V and P category LED and is inclusive of installation, maintenance and repairs um, for the assets which are entirely owned and managed by our participating members. Here we've got an example of a typical criteria which we may use to conduct a tender such as this. This includes compliance criteria such as your insurances and your compliance with terms and conditions. We'll also be looking at uh, professional competence, customer focus, corporate governance and social responsibility, as well as financial criteria. Suppliers can tender for any one category or a combination of these categories. The evaluation and award will be on a category by category basis and on a state or national level. So this tender will consist of six different parts. That is part A, information for tenderers, part B, conditions of tendering, part C, deed of standing offer, which is the proposed contract to be executed between Procurement Australia and the awarded tenderer. Part D, sub-agreement general conditions of contract, which is the general terms and conditions between our members and the awarded tenderer. Part E is the specifications of this contract, and lastly, part F, returnable schedules, which is um, what tenders are required to fill out and submit. So this is what a typical returnable schedule may look like. Um, please note that these are still to be finalized. Um, I want to draw your attention to schedule one and 16, uh, which are the declaration pages. When making your submissions, uh, please ensure that these pages are properly filled out and signed. So I'll be the tender manager for this event. My role will be to manage the tender event, call and close it, summarize and evaluate submissions, and then develop a contract award recommendation.
this table here highlights the responsibilities by the, all the stakeholders involved. Um, so essentially, Procurement Australia will be responsible for calling and receiving tenders, evaluation, making a contract award decision, and then executing a contract with the successful suppliers. Participating members will then issue purchases, receipt and make payments, and then managing the commercial relationships with the suppliers. Suppliers will then be responsible for sales reporting and rebate payment, with Procurement Australia responsible for the overall monitoring of contract performance. <clears throat> Here are the important dates which you will need to remember, so please put these down in your calendars. Today we've got the industry briefing. As part of this briefing, we'd appreciate any feedback you may have, so please, if you could have it back to me by the 2nd of June, that would be appreciated. On the 15th and 16th of June, we'll be placing um, adver advertisements in major newspapers in Melbourne, Sydney and Adelaide. On the 16th of June, the tender will be released via Tenderlink and closing on 7th of July. We're yet to determine a date for the award of contracts. However, um, the contract itself shall commence no later than the 1st of October, 2021. Tender documents can be downloaded via tenant only. No other methods will be accepted as only those who have downloaded the uh, documents through TenorLink are able to make the submission. Uh, please note that the download fee will be $80. If you've got any clarifications regarding the information within the tender, please ensure that it is submitted via the TenorLink online forum because I will not be responding to any questions through direct contact. If there's any addendums, such as additional documents, um, updates or changes, then it will also be through TenderLink. So please pay attention um, for those email notifications. Uh, when you've downloaded the documents, uh, please read them thoroughly, thoroughly and ask any questions you may have as soon as possible, as the form will close on the 30th of June, in which there will be no further opportunity to ask any questions. Tenders must submit all returnable schedules and sign it where it is required. If there is any other information deemed necessary, please also include it in your submission. Um, please note that it must be uploaded into the portal prior to the closing date and time. So that is 7th of July at 3 p.m. Submissions through any other means such as hard copy, email or any other electronic means uh, will not be accepted. So pursuant to a contract, um, the contractor will be required to pay Procurement Australia a 2.2% rebate. Um, when filling out your financial responses, please incorporate this percentage. So here we've got an explanation on how members can use this contract. They are generally separated into two groups. The first one being the pre-committed members who have pre-committed pre before the tender is released. Um, a list of these members will be published in the introduction pages of the tender documents. Any other members who wish to use the contract after the tender is released will need to opt in, which is basically a letter to the successful supplier stating that they'd like to use the contract under the auspices of the Procurement Australia banner. Here we have an explanation on the engagement and invoicing process between Procurement Australia, the members and the suppliers. So basically Procurement Australia signs the contract with the supplier, the member then opts in and raises the purchase order, the supplier delivers the product or service to the member and then invoices them, members will then pay the suppliers, suppliers are then required to report the sale to Procurement Australia who will then invoice the supplier for payment. Here are some tender hints. Um, first one being to answer each and every question. Um, it may seem very obvious, however, I've seen a lot of submissions where tenders have skipped questions. Um, don't just state, refer to attachment. Put in the effort to explain and write out your responses in detail. Um, you can still provide attachments, however, we expect that it accommodates your response. Um, clearly articulate responses and demonstrate your expertise. Think of it 
think of it like a high school exam. Um, we want you to put in good responses. So don't just write one or two sentences and um, think that that would suffice. Um, when suitable, use charts and numbers. That will help me understand your submission a lot better. Um, do not use abbreviations. Assume that I don't know what they are, so please try to avoid using them. And lastly, do not upload your submissions at the last minute. Um, try to allow yourselves a couple of hours or even a couple of days. Um, there has been a lot of instances where suppliers have tried uploading at the very last minute and the tendering portal just shuts them out. So what's next? The draft specifications are available for your review and feedback. If you'd like a copy of this, please get in contact with me. Uh, on the 16th of June, the on the 16th of June, the tender will be available for download from June. We prepare for download at www.tenderlink.com forward slash procurement Australia. Uh, to download the documents, you'll need to register an account, which is easy to do and free. However, a reminder that in order to download the actual tender documents, it will be an $80 fee. Um, there are my details. If you'd like to get in contact with me, and um, I'll welcome any feedback you might have, or even a general discussion on how this contract might work. So that's um, 0398108616 or email me at etran at paltd.com.au. So now we come to the questions.